Okay, there's always two discussions um, when it comes to choosing rods for specific lures that are in your tackle box, okay? And the ones that you want to use. Now you have your favorite lures and there's probably one or two or three rods that you really favor to use those. But in many cases, the power discussion is, is basically what you're choosing, all, making all your decisions off of. You're, you're choosing something that can throw a mirrodine. A mirrodine weighs three-eighths of an ounce. I probably have one sitting here, and I do. So you're going to pick a rod with a lure weight of, I don't know, quarter, half ounce, something like that, maybe even quarter, three-quarter. But there's reasons why you have to know the other half of the equation, which is the action of the rod, or what some of us call tip. Because not every medium action rod is going to throw this, or even medium light. You have to understand which ones will fit the bill better. And we're going to break them down one at a time with some of your favorite um, lures. So let's talk about it. Here's a medium action rod, 7-2, um, line weight 6 to 12, throws everything from a quarter to 5 eighths. This is a Fitzgerald. This is one of their Aqua Dreams. Yes, I'm partnered with this brand, so if you're going to go in the comments saying I'm selling you something I'm not, this applies for every rod manufacturer, whether you're Shimano, Daiwa, 13 Fishing, Bowl Bay, it doesn't matter. Applies for all of them. So why would this be a good Miradine rod? Well, it's medium, so it's going to be able to throw a 3 8 lure, and I've got them right here. It's going to throw a 3 8 lure like a Miradine. It's going to be able to, I, I put a couple of them up here, a small topwater like a Mira Mullet. It's going to be even able to throw a little heavier topwater like the Top Pup, which is probably getting up around 5 8 and it's going to be able to throw smaller jigs where the wire of the hook isn't too big. You don't want a real thick wire hook. So this throws treble hook lures the best, especially the smaller plugs, and it will throw finer wire hooks or lighter wire jig hooks on baits that aren't too bulky where you gotta punch them across wind. It'll, naturally it'll throw a four or five inch tail with a jig downwind very well but if you have to throw a crosswind or into wind it would be tougher with this because it's a lighter rod but again watch how far it bends into the blank that's the important part because when you get a trout come up and strike a bait or a snook and you're fighting them and they're shaking violently on the surface especially with a plug they're going to be able to leverage it out of their mouth but if you have this spongy feel at the end of the rod and it's taking and giving and taking and giving and never really finding that, that quick snap back, that's why you don't want a fast action rod for this. You don't want something fast. You want something moderate fast. Um, you definitely don't want extra fast. They feel real good and they cast great, but you lose a lot of fish on them. So for me, this is one of the better setups. I've got this one with a 3,000. Anything in the 2,500 to 3,000 size works well with this. I've got 10 pound braid. This happens to be the Diamond Ice White. And it does a good job. I get good casting distance and I get good performance out of this rod. Now, the second rod that's probably the most popular with most of you is this one. This one is a medium heavy three-eighths to three-quarters and that's what I would call medium heavy in almost any blank. You can look at some of the specs right here. I still got this one on a 3000 but you could use a 4000 on a setup like this. What are you using medium heavy for if, if that's and here I'll give you a little idea what the the tip is on this. It's a little faster. This is a medium heavy fast so it bends you know about a third of the way down the blank, not almost half like the medium. So it's going to find itself quicker when you hit a fish. What lures would be ideal for something like this? Let me show you. This is where your Texas rigs are going to come in. Anytime you're Texas rigging a bait, rigging something weedless, you've got to overcome the plastic. 
okay? So you've got to overcome that. Anytime you have that situation, that is when a medium heavy is going to come into play. Medium heavy fast. Another good reason to use it is, look at the, let me set this down. Look at the, uh, the heavy gauge wire on this redfish eye. See how nice and heavy duty that is? That's strong. That's designed for you to fish around mangrove barrier islands and in marshy zones where there's lots of oyster bars and keep a fish from running back to cover. It's also a bigger, longer tail that's a little floppier. And if you're throwing it on a medium, it's going to tumble more and it's not going to give you the casting distance that you really want. It will cast it downwind, but it's not cost across or into the wind. It won't do it, it won't do you any good. But with a medium, it will. You can drive it through there. And you can drive that hook and have a more positive connection. So anytime I'm fishing weedless or I'm fishing a little bit heavier jigs and those quarter ounce and up because even though this is probably a 3 16 to quarter ounce jig on here, by the time you add that tail, we're probably close to a half an ounce. And on this rod, 3 8 to 3 quarters, that's kind of the sweet spot, that half ounce 5 8 So it's perfect setup for this particular rod. Again, unless I'm fishing around docks or some type of cover where I'm locking the drag down, I'm more or less using this with 10 and 15 pound braid. Again, the diamond ice white. And, and I'm putting it on a three or 4,000 reel. This happens to be the Shimano Ultegra. Uh, and I find this is a good light balance setup that does serves me well. Now, what happens with a lot of you guys that are getting into these really light baits? I mean, you're throwing the small stuff, the finesse stuff. Well, it's this rod right here that you're going to pick up. Now, this one in particular is more like a medium light. It says medium on this blank, on this Aquafin blank, but it throws everything from 1 16th up to a half ounce and the line weights 5 to 10. That tells me it's really a medium light. So again, let me give you an idea of that tip. Look how deep it bends into that tip. Pretty deep, you know, all the way back to basically this guide here, which is just past the first guide, it'll bend that far down in the, in, the, in the blank itself, which tells me right away that this is going to be ideal for throwing lures like this. The MR14, which is the, mirror, the mini Miradine, I mean something real small that has size 7 hooks on it, baits like this. This is a Ned rig. I, I use these little TRD craws, but I use a lot of the TRD finesse stuff. Anything with these light, light wire hooks, real fine hooks. If you're into fishing that way, especially this winter, this is the rod setup that's gonna work for you the best. It's still seven foot. I can still cast it a good distance. Um, you can pack it with anything from eight to 10 pound braid. This happens to be 10. I've got it on a twin power 3000 just because the drags on these are so silky smooth. Anytime I'm fishing Ned stuff, I like to have a higher end reel. Typically, this is a whole nother episode. I would rather spend the money on the rod with spinning gear than the reel. But when it comes to Ned rig fishing, it's pretty important to have a really nice reel. Um, for feel and for that slippery drag. Now you might ask, well, what about those guys that like to throw, especially on, in Southeast Florida, and, uh, guys that like to cobia fish? What if I want to throw some big swim baits or glide baits? What would I use? Are you going to reach for this one? This is the rod that I consider more of a stick, more of a pass rod, inlet rod, uh, a rod that you would target bull redfish. Uh, jetty or bridge snook um, e even the what we call affectionately the hour jacks the giant jack favels maybe some of the guys in the panhandle would even cobia fish with this rod just because it is a quality this is a i'm going to show you the specs on this rod here this is from fitzgerald this is more of their uh heavy extra fast if i would say or heavy fast and it's seven foot six, and I'm going to show you how little this will deflect. I mean, it is 
barely bending in that last 15% of the rod, maybe 20% of the rod. Now, what would you need a rod like this for? Well, other than fishing scenario fishing like I had earlier discussed, let's just say you want to you wanna throw some heavy big swimmer glide baits. Now, this is a big swim bait called the Hercules. This is the 6-inch size. It's got an 8-aught hook in it. I throw the 5 a lot, which I believe has a 7-aught hook in it. But you can see that's a heavy wire hook. So you're going to need something with a tip that won't give so you can get great hook penetration. If I'm fishing in current, a little bit deeper water where I need to stick fish, maybe a big flounder in a pass. Uh, another, another lure that I like to use, and I have found a use for it even in some uh, inside zones, is this is the line through Mullitron, the Mullitron LT. Now this is the bigger one, the six inch one. When we're fishing with this, we expect to catch big fish. It's a lot of plastic to overcome, so you're going to have to have a rod that will really drive it home. And that's when I picked this rod up. Now I'm not using this rod in everyday fishing, but I'm getting ready to leave for North Carolina and fish with Captain Jod Owens up there for some striper and maybe for yeah, maybe some citation stock, you know, size reds, which are big. I guarantee you I'm bringing two of these. All right, let's talk about a rod that I like to use because every one of you know I'm a plug guy, I'm a casting reel guy. Uh, it's a specialized rod and and for throwing those plugs in that half, three quarter, let, let me show you. So this one I absolutely am going to pimp for my buddy Trevor Fitzgerald because it's really a bass rod and I geek out when I get to use bass action rods. Okay. Uh, this is something new. It is actually one of their composite rods. So it's, there's a little fiberglass mixed with graphite in this and the fiberglass is really in the end of this rod, uh, the way they've blended it. It's a proprietary thing they've done. So you can see the play in this rod. So I've got about 35% where this bends, but it's a medium heavy rod. So I can throw all the plugs that I like to throw. Because I like to throw a lot of plugs in that half to three quarter ounce size. That's kind of my sweet spot. And I'll give you some examples right here. I love throwing the L30 this time of year in creeks and rivers. It's, it's like a two hook, hook jerk bait. I can flick it and wait and it just kind of slow wobbles, take a little slack up, flick it twice and wait. And when a snook comes up and grabs this thing, I can lean on him with this rod. And when I lean on him and he, if he launches out of the water or anything like that, the rod doesn't snap back like a fast or extra fast would. It still has that nice, easy, boy, that braid's light. It has that nice, easy bend to it. So it allows me to stay connected. One of my, my favorite things to do this time of year, a lot of the tannin creeks and back bays right now that have snook and some juvenile tarpon in them, uh, lots of redfish just kind of floating around in them after a cold front, post cold front. I'm throwing a lot of 27s on the warm-ups. And these have a little bit bigger treble hook. They're not like the 17s. You see how thick those hooks are? Now I mash the barbs down on them, but you've got to be able to drive that in. It also works good for inlines because inlines require you to use that as well. They require you to have a little heavier action rod. Uh, I do a lot of contact bait fishing where I'm just casting and reeling and covering zones and creeks. Um, this little swim bait that we, we launched at Mirror Lure a couple of years ago. I like to use it this time of year. It does a good job, especially in this nature coast area. That rod's perfect for it. And as you know, I'm a huge trout fan. And from now, right now in December, all the way to March, I'm going to be throwing a lot of these bad boys, or I should say fat boys. Fat boy weighs, you know, about a half ounce. Some of them are a little heavier. Some of the floaters are a little lighter. Um, but they do a fantastic job on a plug rod like this. Right handle size. This is a Corrado 200, something with a wider spool where I can really send it. Uh, I typically will spool this up with 20 pound braid if I'm trout fishing. Sometimes I'll spool them up with fluorocarbon to be quite honest with you. A lot of times they're spooled with fluorocarbon. Um, but it's just a good feel. Um, 
I love this little blank. It's only six foot eight and it does a fantastic job. I'll show you the specs right there so you can check it out for you pluggers. I think you'll like this rod too.